Hi, kitty cats. I am Amethyst Herrick, straight from the ministrations of my hairstylist, the lovely and talented Ashley. Shout out to Ashley. And I am your hostess for Gender Identity Weekly, a weekly discussion about identity and gender from the con contributors and guests of the Purple Paw Publications website, Gender Identity Today. This content is brought to you by subscribers of Gender Identity Today. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for your support. But if you'd like to support shows just like this one, as well as other content such as podcasts and writing by our contributors, please consider subscribing using the links you're going to find in the show notes. So today I have with me, hey, my show notes aren't moving. There we go. <laughs> Today, I have with me a good friend of mine, Bill Tucker. First of all, hi, Bill. Thank you for, for agreeing to talk to me on such short notice, too, which is nice. Um, Bill and I have been friends. We were we were guessing, to, I thought 2008, but you're saying 2009. And I'm, I think I'm it gonna was dinner in 2009, like all right. December 2009. Because that's cause a long like the next time. next month, I started a job. At right. the uh, institution at which you were employed, right. and we started doing like tea every once in a while. That's right. That cinnamon tea. That mm -hmm. it was. It was like a. It, it was a, a lovely like afternoon, kind of. Oh, trips down memory lane. <laughs> but aside from being like you know somewhat vaguely affiliated through software, Bill is also. You have done a lot of tabletop role playing games, and I also know that that you're an improvisational actor. Although at this yeah. point, I guess I've never even seen you do improv because it was always, you know, I think, I think you're about to, but <laughs> I, I, um, I used to run a meetup here in oh, right, right. six years and yeah. uh, just led that meetup and uh, that's right. For, I forgot to teach improv and stuff. And now I think someone else is teaching an improv meetup and my, you know, I've passed the torch on, you know, to, there to you go, which is, is always a good, uh, it's a good practice to take, pick up a mantle and then remember to take it off and hand it off. <laughs> and hand it to somebody else. Because you get halfway down the road and somebody goes, hey, what happened to the mantle? I don't know. Jeez, I, do we have a mantle? Oh, no, Bill's got it. No, call him up. You know, text him like, do, 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 do you still have the mantle? And you, oh, son of, ugh. Yeah. So I should point out, like, these these discussions are pretty much all, yeah, improv acting. You know, I like to think it's, comedy improv acting but most times it's it's more you know cringe um but today what, what i wanted to talk about is role-playing games because because bill you've you've done a bunch of tabletop role-playing games and um you and i have spoken about this a lot mm -hmm. i actually did a short bit on another video it had to be probably running on six months ago but there was a an article that i read um, by a, by a um, on the website Sly Flourish, so Mike Shea, if you hear this, you know, leave a like or something. I don't know, he's not going to hear it, but you never know. Mm -hmm. But Sly Flourish, so Mike Shea talks about D and D in his on his uh, uh, podcast, and he wrote an article called D "Playing D and D Can Save Your Life." His um, conclusion was, you know, you go to you go to um, to play D and D and, and, you know, you're hanging out with friends and I don't know, having a beer with them, whatever you do. Mm -hmm. And it's really the social interaction that, that helps you, you know, feel, feel more, feel more comfortable. But, <clears throat> and here's where I get to wax, um, you know, academic, my work in identity, you know, I believe that, um, that our identities come from, some origin of identity, the person we know we are, and then the level of safety that, that we're capable of negotiating with our social environment. And so there's, you know, a negotiation between the person we know we are and, and whom we present, whom we express in our social environment. I believe it was Colonel Mustard in the, oh, damn, what happened? Um, I believe that role-playing games help us do that to negotiate our identity within a social environment. And sometimes, you know, I, I mentioned safety in particular, mm -hmm. but now that I've been talking for like five minutes, how about if I stop there and, and let you, let you have a, have a crack? What do you think? Yeah. I, I mean, some of the stuff you, you said about like, uh, 
you know, who you are. I, I think there's that, the, that identity role theory, you know, like, you know, you know, you get fo- foisted these, this, this mantle of identity of like, you're a child, you're a, um, right. you, you know, you're a student, you know, you're an employee, you know, you're a, your parent, you're a, and, and those, sometimes those things are just, you know, your environment kind of force, you know, points at you and says, you were those things. Yes. And I think that the trick or a trick to living life is take those arrows and just point them outward. I want those things. I want to be a parent. I want to be an employee at this place. Sure. I want sure. to be a child. You know, I, you know, I, I want, you know, these relationships to, to own them. Sure. And I think in the same, and then in role playing, you know, you have those same, um, same forces, you know, you get, well, I'm in a campaign and now I'm a thief, you know, and I have to unlock these doors and, you know, I'm supposed to steal from the people or, you know, <laughs> to, you know, I have these responsibilities. I didn't want to, you know, and you get to sort of explore both like this character that you're, you're imagining or creating or developing and also the needs of kind of the group, you know, like, oh, if we're going to play this game, we're definitely going to need a thief Who, who's right. going to find the secret doors without that. <laughs> That becomes a social environment, though, doesn't it? Right. I mean, now you've mm-hmm. got people, you've got to play a role. And it's safe, right? Because, like, you know, if this game falls apart, um, you know, like, oh, I'll just never speak to these people again. Like, maybe, maybe you go to a conference, right? And you, you play with these people and it's uh, like, wow, that was that was pretty terrible. <laughs> we'll never speak of this again. And and it's okay. <laughs> you know, it fails. It it fails. You take away, like, that. I won't I won't do that again. Or, like, well, that, that was something I didn't <laughs> right. like. And that's that's still valuable information. I think we've all Very had true. like I've touched the hot stove. Hot stove is I I do not like hot stove. I will right. never right. touch the hot stove again. So we were to, you know we were talking. You're at a conference and you have a tabletop, but I even think like role playing video games can help. Um, I mean, I think there's an aspect to that. Um, you, you've played both just as I have. What, what do you? I mean, what do you think about doing like video game type stuff? Well, I think a lot of the, like the massively online role playing game stuff that that gives you sort of a you know an environment that has rules and stuff, but you often have ability to like shape your character or or take your own imagination and apply it to this this uh, this character that then gets exposed to the public. So it, it's sort of a uh, an opportunity to sort of put put on a suit and perform for um, right. and in the performance isn't necessarily for like this bad audience, right? People don't um, log in and say like, Oh, let's look at Bill Tucker's character. That's going to be <laughs> so amazing to, you know, just follow him around and watch his little butt bounce as he t- runs through the forest. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, it, it, it re- I mean, I think that's sort of a curious thing with role-playing games is that the audience is really yourself. Yes. You know, like how, you know, I, I try this, I make this character. How do I, how do I respond to that character? Do I, do I like it? Is it pleasing? Is it, is it entertaining? Is it fun? Right. Um, right. And then how, and it, and it's not just in that moment, but how, how it changes over time. You know, sometimes I, I mean, I think there's, there's many writers who have this experience where they're writing a story and, um, they they find like I, I tried to do this dialogue, but it didn't feel right. It's not something they would say, and the char- and and they they even go further sometimes and say this character is telling me what to say. I'm just uh, it's like they're channeling, you know. The character won't. I mean these I, these characters are arguing my head, and I'm merely a medium for them to get right. exposed. And I think. Right. <clears throat> you know when you when you enter an environment, whether it's real life or online you you aren't just there by yourself you're 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 there in this environment and you act on that environment and the environment acts on you and so there's right. a there's a sure. negotiation about like what is it what does it mean to be like in the original example i gave of, what does it mean to be a thief yeah. you know are you always running from the law are you are you always stealing whenever there's an opportunity you know what what makes you um that label like, or what does yeah. that label mean to you how do you embody this and make it part of you yes and so the the games give you a, a sort of like a like a, 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 a 
like a, I would say almost like a crutch because here's this this environment that's created for you and you only have to make a narrow set of decisions. What color is my yeah. hair? Yeah. What am I <laughs> right. going to wear? Yeah. What, you know, what kind of role, what kind of class or player or character am I going to be in this in this defined world? And then explore. I think that's that's really the the key thing. Like sometimes people and they enter world and they just they just want to stand back and be like a wallflower. They're they're afraid to interact, afraid mm-hmm. to fail, afraid to get harmed. And right, right. the great thing about like like games like that is that um, you can just reload a save character, right? <laughs> that's a the, good point, the, the price of failure yeah. is so small. Yeah. Yeah. But, and but and that's, can... I mean, I mean, I think we've all like, I don't know, like early days of EverQuest, people would come along and loot your body like, no, I didn't get back to it fast enough or something. Right. And so, I mean, there, there is, I mean, that the, in order, I mean, life is risk, right? You, you, you're not really living if there's, there's no risk. So there, there can be harm or, or frustration there, but it, you know, in, in, in the big scheme of things, it's it's not a big deal. Your the the big value is not some type of crazy artificial currency that only exists in this game. The real value is the experiences and stories that you live and play, and the memories that you make because you take that yes. forward mm-hmm. and it, you know make your next character. You know make, make right. you know learn right. something, make a new friend. You know have have all other aspects that that contribute to your fulfillment. I'll say, yeah. Because you had mentioned also um, fiction writers, you know, mm-hmm. have, have uh, you know, they'll, they'll say, well, my char- this character wouldn't say such and such. And I had a conversation some, some weeks back with Tucker Lieberman, who had written a, a book of fiction. And I said, hey, did you get these kinds of things? You know, are these different, uh, like different aspects of your personality? And he says, well, you know, yes and no. You know, like they had a real aspect to them where he knew who it was, but he had to play sort of play the character as the character would to write it down. So um, anyway, I think that was where I was going. There's a, you know, it's a, a trying on and, and the say the, the aspect of safety is a big one. Um, there was one more thing I was going to bring up, but, but I won't, I want you to respond if you have anything. Um, well, I think there's a couple things like why, do we play role-playing games? I mean, is it is it to explore a particular character? Or, you know, I log on to, you know, some massively online role-playing character. Like, I really want to play this thief or this bard. You know, I, that sure. is that is my meaning. And it, is it... Um, and, I, and I think um, in, in role-playing game literature, there, there's really uh, some different kinds of players some are really into into playing the game they they like like i don't know if you remember playing you know war gaming and having all these miniatures like we're seeing this thing we're you know rolling dice you know who's winning what you know what oh, sure. you know, who's capturing this or that and so so there's this big game and and these these characters when you're playing the role playing you're you're essentially oh i get to be this piece and then I'm I'm trying to you know maximize my pieces powers so I can continue <laughs> right. to the group and so our team wins. And then um, there's a there's another type of uh, and that that was sort of I think the original vision of like Gary Gygax and his Dungeons and Dragons. You know it's it, it comes out of like that war gaming. Yeah. And what you know and, and so you really want to like you know how do I get as many gold pieces as I can and kill all the monsters and gain yeah. all the experience. Yeah. Min maxers, right? Isn't that, what, isn't that the word we? No, that's well, been... I, um, well, so there's another type which is sort of a simulationist. Okay. So they're playing this game, but it can't look like the old style Star Trek where everything's made out of cardboard. It really needs to be more real. I want to see textures in the game. <laughs> I want to have a story that makes uh, that. I want to have like, like when I my character hits somebody. It's got to be real. It's got to be cons- like the, the, the dynamics of the world have to be consistent yeah. for me to be engaged. Otherwise, it's like, well, this doesn't make any sense. You know, it doesn't hold together. How can, how can I 
how can I even be a part of this? Right. If, right. if, if the thing doesn't make sense. Whereas the, the gamer might say like, woo, I found a little chink in the rules and now we're billionaires or, right. or you know, right. we've got all this power. We're gods or, you know, there's there. And that's, that's sort of two different, two different aspects. And then there's a third um, sort of a narrative being part of a story. And that story could be like my character, like, oh, I've got this character and he's going to go through this, you know, he's going to have everything. And then slowly the GM and I are going to take that away from this character and they're going to get really low and I'll find out what, what they do and what happens and how they, yeah. what, you know, how they cross into, into, you know, either, I don't know, die or go insane or what, or, or do they, they cross over and become something else and transform mm -hmm. and then grow and gain, you know, uh, sort of a redemption and and then you could do that as part of the um not, not just following that character but but the group or the campaign that you're playing you're really like oh i'm a cog in this in this campaign and we're telling the story we're living this story and i know i'm gonna have to act like this to help the story forward even though that's i don't i don't really like this about i don't actually i don't really like playing a thief i don't really like stealing but we really need a thief, and in order sure. to make the story progress, sure. I'll, I'll I'll be the thief and I'll steal and you know pay the consequences and I'll go off right. to jail right. and that'll give us the next the next step in our in the story or, or whatever narrative that we're trying to tell. Right, and I the I think um, you know, different personalities engage in those. Some of them are like my way is the only way to play. How would you play us? How would you play a game that doesn't tell a real story? It doesn't have a point. It's not going anywhere. Like <laughs> sure. what, what is the point? And, and then there, there's other people who are, you, you know, like I really want to figure out these rules and min max my stats. And, and so I'm the most effective, the most powerful, the most influential. <laughs> right. And, 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 and they're, 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 all of them are valid. And that's what's sort of crazy about role playing is it it isn't about um, you don't have to do that one thing. And, the, and that's sort of the challenge for the game master. Who, who are the different personalities in this group and how can I make sure they're getting something out of this experience? Sure. Because sure. It, as an art form, it's sort of it's sort of really reversed. Right. You don't. I guess now we have people that sit around and and um, sort of live stream the role playing games. But sure. like if you like when I was a kid and I would go and watch other people play, it was a yawn fest. You know, it it was it it was not fun unless you were like in involved. You you had like right. skin in the game and so to speak. Well, but also you know because like old school D and D, because I mean I started with like the red box, right? You know, it was nineteen eighty. <laughs> I guess I don't even know, but it's something like that early eighties and the rules, like it was, it was so easy to die. You know, like slip on a banana peel, fall down the stairs in a dungeon. It's like, well, there goes our magic user. Cause you only had two HP, right? It was well, like, there was D4. like a uh, <laughs> traveler, I think is sort of the classic seventies, uh, late seventies role playing okay. game. And you yeah, could right. die during remember. character creation. So, <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah, you could, you could, you're like, I'm going to go on another tour of duty. Oops, you died on that tour of duty. Time to start over. We're oh going to start gosh. making your character all okay. over again. I, and it's, I, it would, I heard it, that it, about Shadow Dark. Uh, Shadow, Shadow Dark, Dark, I think. Yeah, no, Shadow Dark. I, I think it's, is that what it's called? I'm trying to remember what it's called. Uh, Kelsey, it's a Kelsey. Oh, I can't think of her last name either. But it, it's like an old school the, you know, it's supposed to be sort of like old school D and D, hmm. where where you you also can die during character creations, essentially. I mean, like that's pretty impressive when you do, when you can do that. But yeah, it really hurts the people. Like I had a story for this character, I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to fall in love with him, and then I make a bad role and he's dead. Oh my I had, god! I had a great backstory about his cousin and like you know the the. Knife that he had to go and return to, like, you know, someplace out there so that his father's soul could live in peace. Really slipped on a banana peel, did me in. This all, I'm out of here. <laughs> Flip the table over. Yeah. yeah, and I think the, um, you know, the gift you give to the people that are, that feel so sensitive about that as a, yeah. a game master or something is to say, well, let's make a new character 
tell me how he's related to the person that died. <laughs> sure. You know, how, how did they know them? And is right. their path influenced by that? And then that gives yeah. them like, well, I've got this whole other dimension. And there's a reason I'm going to go out into space and try to find where my, my, uh, you know, I'm never going to let myself die like, you know, Uncle Eddie did. You know, it's <laughs> Uncle Eddie, the space pirate. He was, I'm going to join the the space force. We're going to keep law and order. I'm not going to be a sucker like uh, Uncle Pirate Eddie. <laughs> right. Pirate. Yeah, the dread pirate Eddie. Ed. Um. You know, there there was a point that you made that I thought that I thought was fascinating because sometimes you do make a character and it's not the character you want, you know, you would mention the thief, like maybe you go, I would never, but I don't like stealing things. I don't want to be a thief. And it reminded me, I guess, I guess, I guess this, we talked about this the other day where there, you know, now, now in role playing games or like video games, you know, they have the good and bad sides. Right. And I always suck at doing the bad, the, you know, I still remember playing KOTOR, you know, Knights of the Old Republic, Star Wars, and I had the original Xbox. Uh-huh. And you could either get light side, I think it was light side points and dark side points. It, it's not that important what the name was. But I remember the first time I got dark side points and I went, oh, because I thought this is going on my permanent record. Mm-hmm. You know, like I was kind of mean to like this old man or something. You know, old man said, you know, can I have five credits? And I go, sorry, man, I don't have a dime. And then it was like, well, yeah, that was dark side points. I'm like, no, but I, I don't want to be that person. I'm not, I'm not that, you know, I'm not that person. I mean, you said, yeah, you can just, you can, you can, you know, load Restore a save. Some save. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, and I, I'm pretty confident I did like, I mean, I, I know that I did I at least one that it was like, I am getting no dark side points. Cause dang it. I don't want to be, but it revealed, revealed that about myself. And I got dark side points was just like, Oh, like it hurts so badly. You mm-hmm. know, I thought, Oh, certainly I would be walking around like Darth Vader, you know, kicking ass. Right. Only maybe, you know, like maybe better colors. Because, like, that the was, you know, he was a bit drab at the end of it, right? You know, I mean, I was okay with the black, but it was just, like, all black, everything, you know, just, like, a couple of flash and boop, boop. I don't know if it made noises. But that's boring. Think, like, yeah, there's, know. like, a button to call his mother or something. <laughs> I think so, yeah. You know, there was the hit the button and roller skates popped out or something. You know, hit a button and, like, a little propeller. Or, you, right, you know. Say, hang on, I got to call the emperor. Hang on, it was, you know, pull, twist off his thumb or something like that. Just, Hi, Dad. I, I mean, uh, Emperor Palpatine. Yeah, I lost the Death Star, dang it. <laughs> Who would have thought? Um, I'm out here spinning in my TIE fighter. Come pick me up. <laughs> I'm on spin cycle over and over. There's no air resistance in space. Come on, Palpatine. I'm really... All right. So the point being that... Um, I don't even know the point. What was the point? Oh, right. I thought I would love to be this Sith Lord, right? You go walking around, you zap... Or, you know, Sith, whatever. Who cares? You're like zapping people and you're, just, you're right. You're just, I find your lack of faith really kind of refreshing. You know, that's mm-hmm. the way I felt. Cause I'm like, no, I can't force choke somebody. I just felt like hell it was terrible. And if you put me as a thief, you know, they'd be like, okay, just go up and shiv that one old man. You know, mm-hmm. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go up there and <sighs> no, I'm not. Look, we didn't get the five gold pieces. You know, we're going to have to, you know, sell Aunt Judy or something like that to get the, you know, the, the, the gold pieces. I'm not going to shiv the old man. So, well, that was a really long tangent just to say that, yeah, sometimes when you put yourself into these, it reveals something about yourself that like, I don't think like things I didn't know. How sensitive you are to things like, Oh, I, right. I, I, you know, it's like, sort of like this emotional hot stove. Like, Ooh, I touched that. I don't like it. Or I touched that and wow, that's awesome. I really yeah, Exactly. I had no idea. I liked charred skin. That's pretty sweet. Right. Now I can be a Sith Lord. Indeed. I wasn't sure where that was going to go. 
<laughs> but I, I think that's part of the fun of like, even when you like read a novel or, you know, a book or something, you see characters do something and it gives you like a new, you're, you're sort of along for the emotional ride. And that's when you're doing role playing games, it's, you're, you're really much more part of the story and the story doesn't have to have a nice clean ending like maybe a book might have to have. So sure. um, you really get uh, a bunch of choices about how to react to things and to practice reacting to things. Because it, yes. um, it isn't just like, oh, okay, I know my character, I know how I react and stuff. But seeing your colleagues, the the other members of, the, of your group react to things or the, the game master giving you a situation you didn't expect and you're, oh, I haven't, hadn't really thought about how I feel about you know, shiving an old man in the back for five gold pieces. So, <laughs> right. Um, and I think it gives, and that's that's sort of part of that exploration part of like, well, what, um, you know, what would my character do? What would I, you know, what would I do? What, but, but what would my character do? And mm -hmm. and what am I trying to get out of this experience? Am I trying to maximize the gold right. pieces so of the party, or am I trying to live up to the the uh, the character the character's identity that I've already imagined and and I'm trying to right, build or right. create or but but that's where I think it gets difficult is where you go okay well my I would do this but my character would do but that's that's kind of a good lead in because because I you know we talked a little bit about improv like to me acting is different from role playing and I. And I think improv in particular, you know, some, sometimes you just go up there. You're like, look, I just want to be completely off the wall, which is cool. You know, not, you know, <laughs> sometimes that works. And sometimes, you you know, you get a whole audience sitting out there going. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think there is like the worst person, the worst feeling like being on stage and improv is to just be on stage and have have nothing to say. <laughs> it is like right. if you there used to be um viola <clears throat> viola spolin is sort of the grandmother of improv and she would teach people she'd take half the class put them in the audience and then the other half would stand uh, i think stand one by one on stage and the, she i think she would leave them there for like five minutes oh shoot and if you've ever like i mean i think we've all maybe um, know of someone, or maybe it's happened to ourselves of someone standing up in front of class, can't remember what they're supposed to say for their book report. And it's extraordinarily sure. awkward. Oh, sure. Right? You, in the audience, you feel for them. And then being up on stage, it's, it's just, it's like an emotional ringer. Like, and for, for, I mean, there are some people who, you know, Oh, wow. People are looking at me. This is amazing. It's, it's <laughs> right. fueling my soul. I can, and, and like, like a Robin Williams, like I, I don't need a script. I will just do funny things. I love all these people and I will take their energy and I will make something beautiful. Out of them. Sure. You know, there, there are, I mean, that's a, that's sort of a skill, but when you're first learning and have, don't know what to do, it's, it's just such a lost feeling. And the reason she, that that lesson was given, she said was, to show that the most important thing is not to like be the star on stage. It's to give your colleague on stage something to do. And so just the same thing in, in role-playing games, you know, like I, I hate being a thief, but I can give like, you know, by, by uh, stabbing this old man in the back, I give the paladin or, you know, like some law abiding character in our party, something right. to do. He has to react to that. He has to, he has to say something. He has to do something. Um, and, and that, that creates relationship and that's, yeah. and, and that, that's something that you can build with because it, if you, if you just enter sort of, you know, Casper milk toast, nothing, there's, <laughs> there's nothing to build on. You know, you can't, how do you build a story when you're, you have so much fear that you can't True. make a choice. True. And, and actually, cause you, you have returned to that point. I think that's actually the second time that, that, you know, you, you end up as something bigger. And the first two times I kind of ignored it. Cause I'm like, well, yeah, whatever, but I want to talk about identity, but then it just struck me and it wasn't really that bad. I, I mean, we're still buddies, right? Can we still be friends? Okay. Um, but that third time I went right, actually the ability to make yourself part of a bigger story is probably more valuable 
because we're still at the end of the day, what we're talking about with identity is being able to integrate into some some social environment. Mm -hmm. And you may you may be able to figure out, OK, I don't want to shiv the old man for five um, gold pieces, whatever I said. <laughs> um, but would I do it for, you know, the better of the party? You know, does it end up if you shiv the old man, does, you know, the. Lord Neverwinter or something like that fall down and you can, you know, I'm making stuff up now and didn't do a good job. But yeah, the, the making yourself part of a bigger story is actually a bigger that like I didn't think about that. It's part of a bigger part of a bigger aspect of everything. Oh, that's like jump in anytime because I'm dying on uh <laughs> Oh, I, I, I thought it was great. You know, I think oh, sure. I think you're really you're really kind of searching for what you know, is is being part of something bigger than yourself fulfilling? But all of us yeah. is, right? I mean, every well, all of us are. Like, we have no choice because we're in a society. To a certain extent, we have no choice. Well, I mean, there's certainly people um, that are harmed by society. You know, society rejects. You know, you guys don't fit. Right. And, and but that's so the bigger it's story. not a happy feeling to have no. to try to, you know, be a part, you know, to, to find your place when someone says GTFO very or true. everyone around you says GTFO. Yes, very true. So, I have a, so I have a if, tiny... you know, how, how do you find like a, a bigger identity? I think, you know, that's sort of the classic that robber's cave example of you get two opposing forces that hate each other to believe in something higher than themselves. And that allows them to sort of work together or collaborate, even right. though they have some animosity. And I, I think in the same way, you know, like, okay, I'm not fitting in with society, but I, you know, what, what is bigger that I could, I could aspire to so that I could, I could live out something that's fulfilling. What, what would I find that's fulfilling? And I think that is, <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's that's almost how society is failing people right now. You know, like you, 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 you I think the, um, you know, I, I don't want to paint too too big a brush, but let's let's just imagine that if you felt um, uh, like you had a place and that that you were cared about, you were loved, and that you had a mission or a purpose. Sure. And sure. you belonged. You would would you need, you know, the many of the negative habits and or or behaviors would fall away. Right. I think because mm -hmm. it is so healing to have um, to have hope, to have love, to have connection, to have belonging. Yes, very much. And we don't we don't do a good job at at training people to seek that out and find that. It's all like, well, good luck, kid. Hope mm -hmm. hope you can figure out how the experience point system works. And uh, it, it, it it's uh, it's a real opportunity for leaders yeah. to stand up and and evoke like here's here's some uh, here's some ways we can make the world better. Yes. Do, do you know what's interesting? As as soon as I agreed with you that, <clears throat> that, yeah, telling a story, I should probably clear my throat. One sec. As soon as I agreed with you mm -hmm. that there should be a larger story, you, you, you turned around and said, well, I don't know. Let's look at the individual. And I'm like, gosh, do you just have to be contrarian? Is that what it is? No, I've got uh, a better, the tension, bigger point. The way you tell a story, the way, way you tell a story is through tension, right? These, <laughs> these characters. So oh, it was one perfect. Of, <laughs> one of the, um, you know, one of the principles of improv is really to accept and build. So sure, it's one thing sure. to go on stage and say, you know, the sky is yellow, and someone else to say, oh, no, it's not, it's blue. You know, and and then you can just argue about it, but that doesn't that disagreement doesn't take the story forward. Sure. Sure. You know, so you really need to sort of accept, okay, the sky's yellow. Um, and, uh, you know, and it's yellow because of this nuclear blast that went off or we, oh, it's gosh. yellow because, you know, we're on this crazy planet. Gee. You know, it's, it's adding some, making, making the world just a little bit bigger. It's a right. sort of a gift to the, and now, now the other person sort of has, 
can can accept that gift. Yeah, it's we're on this different planet, and <laughs> that means we must have got here somehow. And so That's the a good space, point, it's, yeah. and it's too bad the spaceship can't get us home. And so now you've got a problem and that that tension. Um, like, it's well, a good well, point. I, I bet we could ask the locals where you know where we could get another ship or get our ship repaired or you know we didn't really like home anyway. Let's make this our home. I love yellow. It goes on forever, <laughs> right? So, right. And, and and so it just it, you moving it forward gives you uh, that this idea of motion as you as you move sort of sort of forward, oscillating between, I guess hope and fear, you know, these positive emotions, you, you take each other along in this you know, crazy three body problem to uh, some type of resolution to seek sure. you know, a new type sure. of relationship to, sure. to take, take our, um, who we are and find out who we really are. So, so what you're saying is what you were doing was not contrarian, but moving the story along. That's, that's, that's what, uh, I'm I'm just kidding. That whole thing was supposed to be a joke, although that was a but the the cuz you brought up I'm going to go back to the to the last because it was so good. You know, the idea of you know that when we if we can think of our individual identity, which I guess is always largely individual, but you know, some entity, but if we think of that as big as part of a bigger picture, a bigger plan, whatever you want mm-hmm. it to be, mm-hmm. like you know, we we get a sense of purpose. You know, the the robbers, the two bands of robbers working together, mm-hmm. kind of thing. We get a bigger, you know, a bigger a bigger purpose, and and then we do, we don't really tend to focus on that, like in our <clears throat> in like our early development in childhood, we almost always say, well, here's what you need to do. Jimmy, you know, here's a role that I'm going to give you, you know, I know your name's not Jimmy, by the way, this was supposed to be a, it was role playing this way. But we give kids roles. We say, well, here, look at you, you're, you know, your dad played football. So you're like a football playing, you know, boy who also happens to be a thief who shivs, you know, and by the way, your uncle Eddie um, left you this. He was a space pirate, just, but, but we get given this role that, God, I was wondering if I'd be able to bring Uncle Eddie back in. It took about 30 God. minutes, but God damn it, I did it. <laughs> I mean, that was. Rest in peace, Uncle Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Here's to you, Uncle Ed. Um, but, but we hand our kids, we tend to hand people roles. I'm saying kids. And it's not entirely true. Like every social interaction, there's some sort of role that that gets handed to you, and you can either like live it and 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 um, live it and and kind of move the story forward, as it were, or you can rebel against it and and see what you know how how can that contrarian not necessarily contrarian, but you can rebel against that role and see you know can we make all of us better at once? You know, it's a Boy, that was much more profound than I than I thought for Uncle Eddie. But um... I, I think it is really profound. I mean, if you've gone to like you know Toastmasters and here, how would you like to be mm. secretary? How would you like to be president? <laughs> you know, here have some responsibility, and you, you you're you're given this offer, and then do 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 you ta- grasp it? Do you take it? Yeah. And and that you know sort of like that that hero's journey that. Uh, you know, we've heard so much about that that, that you you give you're given this choice, and you you have to you have to t- you have to sort of it might be scary, but you ha- you have that choice. You could try to face that scary. You could you could run away, which I believe the right. classic thing is you first get offered it, you you run away, and it's it kind of sucks. And you somehow they move you back, and you get to make that choice a second time. <laughs> right, right. And you, and you and you seize it. Yes. And then. Um, you're a space pirate. <laughs> then you end Fighting up the, the space force, <laughs> right? Or uh, fun and profit, right? Following, or you know, at least your profit. But um, yeah, so so I mean, there, there, there's a lot in that though. Like, who would have thought that just just playing a role, or you know, like doing a role playing game type thing, you know, could could 
affect so much. I mean, our personal identity, a, a social identity, your ability. Oh, gosh, that was another thing you brought up um, you, indirectly. But but something about it, to, you know, it, you can help learn. It helps you. I got like 80 thoughts funking in my head at once. And it's a small head. Um, being putting yourself in some of these roles can help you learn how to handle certain situations. Um, you know, maybe it helps you learn how to shiv Uncle Eddie, but that's that's not really what you're looking for. But because like conflict, so many people have hard, a hard time with conflict, and a role playing game can help you sort of learn, you know, some of these skills to say, well, you know, you've you've gotten into um, like there's a, there's an adventure. I can't remember it but it's right here. So, oh, the wild beyond the witch light. So it's a Dungeons and Dragons adventure. It's from Wizards mm -hmm. of the Coast, the wild beyond the wit, the witch light. And it says on like page one, it says, you may never have to, to you may, you may never have one round of combat mm -hmm. because every single thing you do, you, you could talk it out. Uh -huh. But could you imagine like when you were 12, um, if, if like, if I had this adventure when I was 12 and they said, you know, some game master said, Okay, what will you do to to talk this out? I'll be like, oh, "What do you mean talk? Right. Like I got a sword. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to stab somebody cuz that's what I'm here for. Is it's D&D &D, I'm stabbing people." Well, but, I think the the affordances of of D&D, &D, like oh, I have this character and I have things to roll for, like to hit, and sure. I've got these weapons, so there's these obvious things you can do. But no one says like I you can use your stunning personality Right. To, you know, provoke a conversation or to, you know, to talk the the princess out of her secrets or whatever. Right. Right. Or to convince the witch to help you or to, you know, empower the monsters to realize they don't have to steal from the villagers to survive. They can learn farming. And right, actually, right. you know, they have a lot of, of valuable skills that they could trade for um, gold pieces at the village. You yep. know, and you could set up a whole... Um, you know, socio-anarchist commune, and <laughs> there you go. Um, and, and yeah, that, that's and that's that's your story. And I'm not sure how many hit po how many experience points you're awarded for those kinds of things. That's at but... least a thousand. Yeah, it's got to be. You know, <laughs> I'm sure it depends on the the number of kabolds there are. <laughs> right. You, you know, though, like sometimes what's interesting, you know, putting we had talked about putting yourself in into, into uncomfortable positions. Sometimes like if you are a good speaker, like I'm curious, like if you were given, let me try to finish a sentence here. If you rolled up a character and it turned out that you end up with like a three charisma, mm -hmm. you're just like, Oh, just, I just ended up, I am not, I am not a good speaker. I'm not a good. And I know you well enough to know that, you know, you can talk your way. You can do, you're a good, you're a good talker. This, this is this is starting to come out really bad, but you know, you, you're personable and and you know you can get people to go along with you. I'm curious what it would be like if you said, "Yeah, I rolled a character with like a three charisma," and the game master says, "Well, you can you can what talk your way out of this," or I can't remember how you put it. You can use your stunning personality, mm -hmm. and you walk up and you go, you know, Og takes wife or something, bonks around the head, right, walks up. Well, I had a three charisma. I don't know what to didn't know what to say. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think that's sort of part of acting. You know, you're given this role, given these constraints, and then right. how do you respond to them? Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, I'm smarter than three charisma, or I, you know, I'm I'm more articulate than three three charisma. But if I have three charisma, what what does that feel like? What, yeah. You know, what choices are there available for me to make? Right. You know, um, and I think that but you, you'd is have what... to dull your skill is the point the, right. and that I, I think... an inborn skill. You'd have to dull it. But in order to play that, it's my. Yeah, it, and it gives you like the opportunity for empathy, right? What? Yes, like, right. Who Who is this character and how would he react? I mean, there, there's sort of the opposite. Like, you know, maybe I'm not very articulate and I've got this character that's really articulate. And so, right. you, you know, in those types of situations, you you ask for help, you know, like, okay, so what, what would he say that'd be super clever 
and and the party can help you or the GM can can help you so that you're making this story or doing doing something something clever. It doesn't always have to be. I I, I guess I, I rarely sort of let let just leave people out there hanging to struggle um, with with trying to you know like oh I've got this high wisdom score can't I come up with an idea you know <laughs> right. what how, how would well let's you know and, and the substitute with you know because it's all like sort of on the periphery of simulation, you know, let's, let's make an ability roll. Okay. You come right, up with something. Right. None of us are smart enough in this room because of, you know, all the, all the jolt cola and pizza we've been eating, <laughs> right. but we're going to just imagine you said something and, it and was now really the witch impressive. is forgiving you all. And here's the potion. So, oh, right. I do. I love those. I love those sort of deus ex machina kind of thing. We just go, look, something happens. A miracle occurred. But it's not really from the it's not really a miracle. It's like, well, that was my character. My character could do that. <laughs> True. But, but it was so amazing we can't even articulate it. You know, it's it's like it's like, you know, the the the, the camera like uh you know the guys would like re- reservoir dogs, he's he's gonna um torch this guy and just kinda goes out. You can't really see what's it's like, oh my god, right. It's, right. it's so much horrible, you know, or it's so amazing I can't even see it. And then you come back like, here's the potion. Yes, you go, we're all friends now. Here's yeah, Jim's you know, got win. the potion. Here we go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's run. Um, we're, we're starting to run out of time, but the time. But there was one thing. I can't remember if you said it or didn't, or if it was before I hit um, record. But you meant that, mentioned there was like Christmas Cthulhu, and I and I wanted to um, because yeah, yeah, like there are many. Christmas. There we go. Yes, it was in the background. Beauty, beauty for high right, Christmas Cthulhu. Right, right, let's see. My stage presence isn't so great on this. <laughs> so working great. Um, because we've talked about the you go into a situation and and you're trying to do something positive, mm-hmm. but like in in so I was thinking in particular like Call of Cthulhu. Part of the role playing is as like a descent into you know. Descent into madness. Descent into madness. <laughs> yeah, you know, to mm-hmm. to coin a phrase that I guess I didn't, but yeah. um, so you know, the, like that's that's an interesting sort of you know th- part of role playing too. Like, how do you you had brought up empathy, but I guess there's that's sort of my question. I mean, like if you go if you play something where half the game is you're going crazy. You're like, what's the benefit of that? Where do where do you see where do you see that helping any kind of development other than you know developing something to do on a Saturday night so that you can kill time? I mean, it's um, I mean the whole premise of Call of Cthulhu is typically like there's a mystery, something weird is going on, and can we figure it out? And then part of the horror it, it aspect is like my character. It's probably going to die, going to go insane. And it's, right. it, he or she is not going to survive. And, um, you know, as a, you know, as a player, you have to be, I mean, I, I think you can have different, different kind of rules. Sometimes GMs will, you know, let, let your character take a break when they go insane, they get committed to the asylum and they can come back in uh, some subsequent adventure mm. or, um, but it gives you the opportunity to like, okay, this character died and now I get to make a new character to kind of continue the story. And so I, as sort of the viewer, the participant in this, in telling this story, I get an extra, it's like having an extra hand. Like, Oh, I've got one character and that's uh, now I've got this other character and I'm going to, I'm going to tell another aspect of this story with this character. It'll continue, continue that story on. Sure. And, and so I think that's, I mean, it depends on how you get joy. I mean, like the simulationists, um, I I think they should really like Call of Cthulhu because you can die so easily, just like in real life. You know, when you get shot, like, oh, it it gets mortal. Yes, right. And like in D&D, you know, I'm shot by an arrow. You know, I'm I'm seventh level, so I can just pull this baby out. It's not nothing. You know, I'll I'll, I'll heal in two turns. It's not a big big deal. (laughs) Right. But besides, we've got the potion now, and and uh... it's also like like encountering your mortality. Like I'm trying to solve this puzzle. Oh, I is see. this puzzle yeah. worth me risking my character's sanity or or or, or li- living to to be able to get an answer? 
you know, what am I willing to sacrifice? Sure. Sure. To find, to, to solve this mystery, to, to, yeah. to maybe not even solve it, to know a little bit more. Yeah. What, you know, what price is knowledge worth? And, and I, I think that's a great, that's a great, uh, it's a great question that we should all wrestle with. You know, there's things we right. want. Right. What is the price? Yep. You know, are you willing, you know, you, you want to get a PhD in chemistry? Do, you know, am I willing to pay the price of four or seven years? You know, what, what, you know, I, I have, and, and it's, it may not be guaranteed. You know, you're, you might be rolling some dice and there, there is a chance that your character creation of a professor of chemistry dies in his, uh, doesn't quite make it, his, yes. his character creation. <laughs> During character creation. But, and, but that's real life, right? Like, how do yeah. I take a risk and what am I willing to do? Right, right. To to further my my own story, or or further you know further discover something. Sure, sure. I I think you actually just explained because I started off with you know I got those sit the dark side points and it you know it damn near killed me. But I think I think I just understood that. I mean, you know, there's there's the empathy aspect of it that that you had mentioned before. What's it like playing somebody who's you know, whose story you wouldn't want to live, but then also, um, you know, what, at what price, you know, would you, you know, will, will you, uh, purchase something? I mean, that's, that's, that is pretty profound, I guess is where I'm going. I, I liked that. I hadn't, ex cause I was like, why do people play horror games? But I, I, I see that it's, it's, uh, Call of Cthulhu is the most popular role-playing game in Japan. Really? Okay. Hands down. Okay. Hands down. Why? I, I don't know. I think I think the I think it's much more satisfying, and um, because you know they they've gone through you know nuclear war, building up society, right, being true. vulnerable. You know their you know their walls are paper thin. They live on earthquake lines. You know tsunamis could come and change the landscape. And, and so that, that feeling of vulnerability of the, the world um, I, being uh, having larger forces than you, you can withstand is, yeah. I think, just like Call of Cthulhu. I mean, I'm, I guess, you know, I'm not I don't have a Ph.D. or I haven't written papers about this, but that's just sort of my my guesstimate from sure. the little I know about Japan sure. is that it, it doesn't have. um a West, like I think the medieval Europe Dungeons and Dragons has less appeal because it's not, that's not how they, 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 they don't have a lot of those, uh, those right. tales or grow right. up with those, those kinds of stories. But, but like Western society loves the story, the, the heroes. I mean, that's why we have, you know, the hero's journey as opposed to, you know, the hero's descent into madness. Look how, but, how many Asians, like you watch an Asian action movie. Yeah. What happens? The hero dies at the end. <laughs> a good he loses to his girlfriend. You know, right. I mean, like there it is. It is. It does not end on, on a, a like yeah. riding out into the sunset kind of moment like Western right. um, entertainment right. media does. Right. And I, and I think Call of Cthulhu really kind of fits in that, like, oh, well, we don't all just gain experience and more gold pieces and buy a castle and rule the land. We right. we slowly lose the pieces of ourselves that we most valued for one small book and a slice of knowledge that ultimately makes us sacrifice everything that we loved and everything that we were connected to. And I still have not figured out the entire mystery. Jeez. <laughs> I'm going to need to go get a cup week, of coffee. <laughs> right? I'm going to need to go get a cup of coffee after that. <laughs> but but that's a it's a great point. I mean, would you know that that role playing games and developing our identity, we're not always heroes. Sometimes we're we're schmoes and 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 being heroes as schmoes is 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 is, is as valuable that that price I, I, 
you know, I, I sort of take a Zen. I mean, like, are you heroes or are you villains? You know, like, oh, well, you solved the mystery. We went around, but we're just murdering hobos, wandering around, killing, kill, you know, <laughs> killing, killing these uh, these outlaws. Sure. And are are we heroes or or are we are we just a bunch of murdering hobos wandering about <laughs> the land collecting gold pieces? Well, but I I mean, see, when I said hero, you you. I, I gave you a thesis and you took an antithesis and, and I, and I, I, not that that's bad. Sorry. It was just because, you know, D and D is a very heroic kind of thing. You don't, even if you're a jerk, like even if you're, you know, chaotic, evil, I'm a stab somebody kind of character. Like you do it because you, you know, you always end up sliding down a banister and flying through the air and grabbing a piece of rope and, sh you know, Running into the somebody else and then stabbing him. I, what did I say? Stabbing the eye? I don't even know. But then stabbing somebody. And there's always this aspect of, of superhumanness, I think is what I'm saying. Being what, special. Yes. Yes. And what you, what you brought up, I, I had not, ex I didn't express it very well, but what you brought up was really the loss of that sort of thing, even not even not just loss of normalcy, even not even just normal humanity, not even superhuman, but how far down, you know, like if you were to start at like ground zero, you've got, you know, the chaotic evil flying through the air, swinging on a rope and whatever else. But call it Cthulhu, Cthulhu you're, you're, you're not even there. So going down, um, I was kind of hoping I'd, I'd, summarize all that better but n now i guess what i'm thinking is i got to go and get a a set of of call of cthulhu books well I, I mean i guess i would end on this um this idea of like being a hero you know it's it's easy to read about these um these stories and these characters but every day we have the opportunity to be our own hero <laughs> Yes. You know, stand up and say like, okay, these are my circumstances. And then what, what does the hero do? And what is the highest, you know, like, you know, maybe in real life, I'm just a character and there there's, you know, some higher self sitting around eating pizza and jolt cola <laughs> and guiding me. Right. Um, you know, what, what is that higher, higher person, higher self, I guess that higher self, what what is the best answer? Like if I think of making an interesting choice or a, a healing choice or an inspiring choice, what is my next move? Let's roll the dice. <laughs> that was lovely. It's really very lovely. Um can we, can you tell people? Do you want people to find you? If you, would you tell people like how can people find you if they want to 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 know anything more about uh, about Bill Tucker? I mean, I guess I'm on Twitter. So I'm Bill Tucker. You know, it's at time Bill know, Tucker. That's the great okay. thing about having a, a very common name is no one can find you. And most of like there's there's so many middle-aged white men out there um, <laughs> that, you know, me having like yet another voice to the cacophony, <laughs> I, I often don't feel like that's, I, you know, I, I should really leave spaces for other people to say things. And that's why I do stuff in my local community. I do, you know, I run, run meetups. I have this, that Python meetup and I, I'm not there to, you know, practice on my constituents. I'm there to just help them. Um, be their own superhero, help, help coach them to grow into their own superheroes, to be the best, you know, to, to not take them down the path, but that, you know, point with my puny finger and say, I think, I think you can go in that direction. You'll find the old man you need to stab for the five gold pieces. <laughs> well, <laughs> so thank you very much, Bill, for, for... be a hero people. <laughs> Go out there, be a hero, and shiv an old man. Um, so, so Bill, thank you so much for for being on the being here and and talking to me and, and make me laugh at the very least. Um, you know, one I more talked about this. Stuff. What's that? I love talking about this I, stuff. Right, I, love, I know. I That's love why... the power of 
the the power of games to make us have fun and create yes, relationships with yes, our friends, yes. create inside jokes. You, you know, that's that's what life is about to me is the right. creating those relationships. You, you know, the thing is that I think I, th- I think people who look at games, gaming in general, you know, something that's not like playing chess or poker or something like that, they look at it as sort of a useless outing. Like oftentimes people go, what do you like playing a video game? You know, couldn't you be doing something else? You know, reading was, isn't there a better use for your time? And no, the stories like build the community around you, even if it's a book, you know, there's, there's still, Mm -hmm. you know, you get something around you and you can go and talk to somebody else. You have a shared experience now about, you know, whatever book it might be. So I don't know that we always, you know, think of that as a good thing. I know, I know that there are people who don't is my point. So, but so thank you very much, I guess. Is, yeah, uh, you're welcome. You know, it's great of, talking to you. Amethyst. Thank you so I much. I appreciate our conversations. Yeah. All right. And, oh, and also, um, you know, here's to you, Uncle Eddie. Space Pirate Eddie, you are the best. <clears throat> my next character is totally going to, you know, find that knife you dropped somewhere. <laughs>